Hello everyone, Rich here. You're about to hear Verena uh, with her wisdom, insight, experience and passion for liturgical prayer, helping take us deeper into this practice, which will be new to some of us. Um, I guess I want to liken this video to a conversation with an incredibly wise friend on Zoom, but for some reason the Zoom is glitching slightly. I don't know if you've ever had those conversations where because you're mature, you push through the Zoom glitches that take you aback at the very start um, because you know that what they've got to say is absolute gold. And so you just push through that initial kind of audio uh, difficulty. Um, the device that this video is recorded on, uh, for reasons that we won't go into, um, just the audio hasn't come out so well and we weren't able to get it re-recorded. Um, but what is in it is so helpful. So please uh, be mature. Lean in uh, as if you're listening to a very wise friend on a Zoom call um, because you are about to listen to a very wise friend in this resource. Massive thanks to Verena for the time and thought that she's put into this. And I know that I, for one, will be really glad to learn from her on these things. So hope you can join in. Thank you. Hello. If you haven't met before, my name's Verena and I'm so excited to be um, speaking to you about liturgy about liturgical prayer I love liturgy I love it as a way that I can yeah, speak to God be encouraged be inspired grow in relationship with him so what is liturgy perhaps you've never heard this word before um, or perhaps you have you with not so excited emotions um, Liturgy is actually, by definition, a way of pressing into relationship with God. But most commonly, what and and what I'm really going to be sharing with is uh, written prayer, words that have been written by someone before us that can be read or prayed communally. Um, and yeah, these are as old as the Bible itself, when Jesus teaches us how to pray with our Father, this is a liturgical prayer, it can be said together, it's written, we can use it day to day in our lives. Um, the Beatitudes as well, the Psalms are prayer, written prayers to Jesus. Um, yeah, the oldest time, but are also completely modern, being written by the, all the time by people we can just one of our many tools. So perhaps you've got a couple of questions or objections. So I guess the first one would be, do I think that liturgy, so pre-written prayer, like this question, is the only way to pray to Jesus? My answer would be absolutely not. Um, but equally, do I think that liturgy helps me to pray to Jesus and helps me to engage in praying constantly and praying in the spirit and growing in relationship with God. Absolutely. For me, liturgy is an essential part of my I guess, toolkit of prayer, something that helps me. Um, it's helped me when I haven't had the words that I want to say. It's helped me when I want to say something just but I just don't feel like I've got the, the time to to think. It's helped me when I've wanted to pray in a, a group setting. I've wanted to have, have something to, to bring, a, a pre-prepared setting. It's helped us in our family and then see. And it's, it's helped me from my earliest childhood memory right through to now in engaging with Jesus. So I guess on that on that note, I grew up in a Christian household. Um, we weren't a household that would frequently read the Bible together. We weren't a household that would sing worship together. But but daily prayers, so liturgy, was something that was part of the rhythm of my life. Um, so daily with meals, we'd be. Um, thanking Jesus for the world so sweet. We'd be um, asking him to bless this house, bless the food, or be present at our table. We'd be um, 
uh, praying for our family through those times as well, and for other people as well in Thanksgiving. Uh, so that would be around meal times. And then the other one really regularly for me would be the same prayer each night. Um, so each night my parents would be praying with me, Jesus, tender shepherd, asking him to hear us, to bless us, thanking us for our day, praying for family and friends. Um, yeah, the same words each night imprinted on my brain. I've just been such a strong foundation for me in um, to Jesus. They were said, as I said, were said by my parents for us as children, said by myself as a teenager and young adult, and now as a parent, said the same words over my children each night, showing them the, the blessing that it is to reach out to Jesus in prayer each night. Um, so yeah, that's my background. But but when when can we use liturgy? I'd probably say always. <laughs> but um, but yeah, what what different types of liturgy are there? So um, you might be aware of some of like um, orders of monks, monasteries, monastic prayer. They would often use liturgy as like a framework for their day. So prayers in the morning, prayers at midday, prayers at the evening meal and prayers before bed. Um, you might say, oh, is it? but that's for, that's for people living a monastic life, people where their day is at. Yeah. But yes, it is. But also there are brilliant ways that, that we can engage in that by having the same words prayed each morning, each night, each day of the week. Uh, prayer for perhaps a prayer for the Sabbath um, and these are yeah highly engaged thoughts so there's lots of different books or resources to find these kind of things a quick search on the internet would find you some there are various different books of common prayer there are apps of common prayer there are apps of daily prayer things like that really loads of resources we'll have some to share on our website and um, this is one that goes through the year the Book of Common Prayer, A Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals by Shane Claiborne and some others. And yeah, as I said, it's got uh, prayers and liturgy for each morning, prayers for midday, prayers for the evening, as well as some just for special occasions as well. Um, we've used one uh, for, for baby dedications before. We've said one, I uh, mentioned for Sabbath and meals as well. There's prayers for your workplace and prayers for your home. Sometimes we, I find, well, I say we, <laughs> I find that I miss out on opportunities for prayer just because I don't think it, think of it first. And books like this, where there's a prayer um, for the room of a young child or for a guest room, what an, what an opportunity to pray, to lift up Jesus, or we have a guest in our house. Such a it's the kind of thing that I wouldn't think of. Maybe maybe you would for that. But yeah, these have got different prayers for every day of the year and they're just so encouraging to hear the words that someone else has already written. And in books like this, someone else around the world is going to be praying those same words today. Jesus says that he hears our prayers when we gather collectively. And yeah, we might not be gathered in the same room at that moment. Jesus is hearing these, these words lifted up to him communication with him. I heard a really great quote recently, which was talking about when you learn to play the piano, you might just do a bit of tinkling around to start with your own little things, but really to learn to press in, to play the piano, to become an expert and a master. You learn to play the composition of the masters, you learn to play the masterpieces. And for me, that's what liturgy does for me as well. Um, I get to be encouraged by and hear the, the words of the great from Jesus and David in the Bible, from um, the saints and monks of times gone by, St. Benedict, um, St. Augustine, uh, to very modern writers. Liturgy is still being written now and it's so encouraging and a beautiful, almost art form as well as a prayer. Um, 
on that line, one of my uh, favourite liturgies, more modern one, is in this book, Every Moment Holy. Um, this is the pocket edition. They've got a couple of other editions with other great liturgies as well. But this one's got a liturgy for arriving at the ocean. Beautiful illustration of this as well. And yeah, you might say a liturgy for arriving at the ocean, but we love to go <laughs> to the sea, the sea. And this liturgy just reminds me of the greatness and the magnitude of God and how small and limited we are in comparison. It just causes me to marvel at him in a ways that I probably wouldn't have done if I'd never read this. Um, we talked about the communal aspect of um, liturgy, uh, which, as I said, can be with the people around the world. It doesn't have to be people in your home, but if there are other people in your home, there are some really great modern liturgies. Um, who are by a fantastic author called Kayla Craig. Uh, this one was her first book. And then this is to use within families, but these are great. Like these do not need to be limited just to parents and families. Um, this is uh, like different liturgies for each week of the year that can really press, press into. This has got uh, loads of different pairs for different events within a family life also brings me on to one great thing which is called a breath prayer. If you were at our vision evening or if you listen back to the recording of our vision evening, uh, Barbara shared that in her workplace as a doctor when she's using her stethoscope to listen to people's breathing she uses their first breath to pray for them. I was so encouraged by this, I love it, but if like me, your day to day doesn't involve using a stethoscope to um, listen to someone's breathing. Perhaps you thought, oh, that's great, but how am I going to integrate anything like that into my life? And I'm going to be encouraging you in that, that you don't need someone else's breathing to to pray. And there's an ancient practice of breath prayers, which is super short prayers, breathe, um, spoken as you breathe in and out. Can be spoken out loud, can be spoken in your head, loads of things. They're often based upon very short past scripture, they can be memorised, they can be said out loud in a moment of chaos <laughs> and they can also be said as part of a longer time of prayer. So I quite often use these as like my first breath into entering a deliberate time of prayer with Jesus. But I also often mutter them after um, strapping my children into their car seats and walking around to my car. Um, <laughs> often as a, a brief cry for Jesus, I need you. Um, this, this book, Like Their Way, has a whole series of breath prayers, which are fantastic. Um, I thought I'd just share um, this one with you. This is taken from Psalm 86, verse 6, and the prayer is simply, Hear my cry, Lord. Listen to my cries for mercy. And obviously in this moment I spoke it out loud to you, but it can also just be message in your head. It's really easy to learn and remember. There's a whole host of them. You can have one that you learn and use just whenever you need to talk to Jesus, to hear from Jesus. Or you can learn different ones. But yeah, literally a breath. Long. What a way to be encouraged when the Bible tells us to pray always, to pray continuously, to pray in the spirit. These are things, these are tools that I use to, to do that, to press in. Um, yeah, that was kind of what I wanted to share. So what 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 could you do from here? The liturgical prayer, as I said, is readily available online, through apps, through books. There's a whole host out there. Um, you've also, as I mentioned, the Psalms, the um, Our Father. Yeah, there's just so many different things that we can be praying that have been written before us to encourage us. I really hope you might find something that you could pray first thing on waking or pray with your family before a meal or the same words you can pray with your community group each week before 
or eating together or a blessing you could say over your children or yourself like that. Um, just first to close, I thought I would um, read the um, closing prayer of the Daily Prayers of Infants that can come up. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again.